How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing well. And as some of you may know, despite it being my streaming service of choice nowadays, I wasn't always an Apple Music user. To be totally honest, the main reason I switched is so I could listen to Faceless by Frank Ocean, but more sensibly, also because I like the interface. That was it at the time. No brand loyalty whatsoever. When I first switched, I was actually on Android. Spotify hadn't burned me either. I was just simply curious about the other streaming service that I saw people using. So without further ado, let's talk about Spotify, Apple Music, and whether or not I regret switching. All right, so first of all, we're gonna be covering the areas where, for me, Apple Music does better. However, after that, we're gonna be covering where I personally think Spotify does better. So the first thing that I really liked about Apple Music, and often one of the first things that I bring up when I talk about Apple Music, is the cross-platform syncing, due to the fact that this is absolutely huge for me. If you add a local album or song to your library, it will upload to the cloud and be available on all your other devices with Apple Music. For me, this is absolutely huge as I listen to a lot of music that is only distributed on sites like Bandcamp, so being able to have this on all of my devices without the need to transfer files individually is huge. You don't even have to download them to be able to play them either. You can simply stream them as you would any other song. This is actually one of the first things I noticed when switching over to Apple Music and it instantly hooked me. Even back then, I had a lot of albums that were only distributed on Bandcamp, and this is one of the main reasons as to why I've stuck with Apple Music. I think this is a fantastic feature and it would be great to see it more widespread. Next up, this is more of a personal preference one, but the interface. I personally prefer Apple Music. I think it's a lot easier to just see what you want, view albums and find stuff, which is a big one for me as I do have a lot of music in my library, so that's important. Spotify to me has always felt either a little bit too minimal or a bit too cluttered, especially on the desktop side of things, because this isn't just mobile. With Apple Music, there is more on the screen at a time, but it's more consistent and, in my experience, been easier to get to where you want in less clicks than Spotify, so I personally prefer Apple Music in this regard. If you do prefer the layout of Spotify, of course, as I said, this is personal, but for what I like, Apple Music wins this one. After this, it's not a huge one, but the lyrics feature on Apple Music is Awesome. Introduced back in iOS 13, you could click on a line in a song and Apple Music would automatically skip to that point in the song, which was a neat feature. Whereas on Spotify, while improved in recent times, it's still not quite there in my opinion. On the desktop version, you can still perform a click skip on Apple Music, whereas on Spotify, the lyrics are shown on screen, but it kind of scrolls through it like a teleprompter. So there's no intuitive skipping method. You still have to use the scroll bar, which while fine, isn't as useful as being able to skip to certain points using the lyrics. So again, I prefer Apple Music here. Next up, we have a big one. Lossless audio. On Apple Music, you can now listen to music in lossless quality, which is actually kind of awesome. Now granted, this does only work wired, which is a little bit of a caveat. And if you want to use the highest quality possible, Apple actually recommend a DAC, but still it's nice to have. This was also released at no extra cost last year. And while Spotify Hi-Fi, which does promise to deliver CD quality listening, it is also expected to cost extra. As it currently stands, Apple Music is one of the cheapest ways to get lossless streaming and as it is included in the streaming cost in this category at least currently Apple Music wins. After this we have iMessage integration. Now something that I really like about Apple Music is you can actually select a song that you were recently listening to and send it to someone directly over iMessage. Honestly well I don't really use iMessage for the people who I do talk to on there it is really nice to be able to share music in such an intuitive way. Finally, we have that Apple Music actually pay their artists more. Now, it was first reported by the Wall Street Journal. Apple claimed to, on average, pay a cent per stream. This is important to me because more money in artists' pockets means more music. I love music. I want more music. Therefore, I want to make sure the people who are making it are getting paid. Making a living as a musician is increasingly difficult. CD sales are on their way out. The commercial studios on its way out. Not to mention that concerts have basically been shut down completely over the last few years due to COVID. So making sure that musicians are getting paid for their craft is important. And if I can make sure that musicians are making a little bit extra money while I'm streaming their music, then I like to do that. Also, nearly done with the preachy PSA. You can still buy albums a lot of the time off Bandcamp, which I like to do for albums that I really like. All right, now moving on to the areas where I personally think Spotify does better slash the negatives of Apple Music in my experience. Apple Music actually has less of the songs that I like. A big
big one for me is Just Married by Glockamora. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. Not available on Apple Music, but on Spotify, it is. Now, realistically, I already own most of the albums that I really like, so this isn't a huge deal to me, but it would still be nice to have. Next up, and this is a big one for some people, no podcasts. I'm not really one for podcasts personally, but I know a lot of people are, and it honestly seemed like Apple and Spotify went in two completely different directions on this one. Apple, of course, separating iTunes into Apple Music and podcasts, and Spotify actively bringing podcasts to the platform, spending millions doing so. Podcasts have also become a lot more mainstream and popular in the last few years, so I'm not exactly sure why you'd create this friction by separating the two. Granted, it does lead to less clutter, and therefore a cleaner interface, but I definitely think Spotify made the right call despite not really listening to podcasts myself. Next up, playlists. It's no secret that Spotify has some amazing playlist tools, along with systems that actually recommend you music that you might want to listen to. If the AI of Apple Music is listening, I don't want to listen to Drake. Please stop recommending me Drake. Now I gotta reset my microphone for a stupid joke. Apple's personal playlist isn't as good either. For me, it was mostly just stuff from my library arranged without much care. Seriously, they put Rage Against the Machine next to Snowing. So if you have a lot of music in your library that is pretty sonically varied and you don't wanna hop from one to the other, this isn't all that helpful. Me personally, I discover music differently and mostly listen in album form, so I'm not too bothered by this. And as long as you're actively curating and managing them yourself, playlists are still very doable on Apple Music. Collaborating is also easier on Spotify and overall, it's kind of no contest here. The final thing, and it's not a huge one again, but there are less social features on Apple Music than there are on Spotify. Do you ever notice that towards the end of the year, all of the insufferable indie heads in your life are constantly posting this Spotify chart? Just in case anybody forgot they listened to Mac DeMarco and Mom Jeans. Well, this is a feature called Spotify Wrapped, and surprise, surprise, it's not available on Apple Music. While it is Apple Music Replay, which is nice to see what you've been listening to, it's much less shareable than the Spotify one. There's no ultra flashy graphics. It's mostly just a playlist. And so it's much less of a yearly tradition than it is on the Spotify side of things. Now, it would be nice to see something like this come to Apple Music, but honestly, due to the fact that Spotify Wrapped is so ingrained at this point, I definitely think it'd be hard to beat. Overall, while it certainly hasn't been smooth sailing all round, I definitely think for my personal listening needs, I made the right choice with Apple Music. And if the things I've talked about in this video sound appealing to you, you, then maybe check out Apple Music. And if not, out of the big two, Spotify may be your better option. All right, guys, so that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I mean, over the way, which do you prefer? Do you prefer Spotify? Do you prefer Apple Music? Do you like something different entirely? Feel free to let me know in the comments. I always enjoy reading those. As for now, though, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this, then smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now, and I will see you guys in the next one. Oh,